So we've gone over the basics of Arnold materials, but let's try to dial in something specific in these materials. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my mushroom and my barrel, control H, and that should hide them. And you'll see, you know, they still exist. They're just hidden. If I want to bring those back, shift H. So again, control H to hide them. And what I'm going to try to do is um, try to make the materials on this axe look a little bit more like wood and metal. And so in my channel box, I'm also going to go ahead and get these back to their origin point here. Uh, maybe raise those up just a little bit so we can see them better. Okay, so we talked just a little bit about the UVs um, for this. So uh, let's, let's just go ahead and break these up into the two pieces. We have the two pieces, the axe handle and the axe blade. So with the axe blade, I really just want this to look like metal, right? So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna go ahead and assign a new material. And in this case, because I'm currently using the Arnold renderer, um, and you know we can do the same thing with Redshift, but we're currently using the Arnold renderer. I'm going to choose one of the Arnold shaders. And the one I usually work with is the AI standard surface. So AI standard surface right here does have some presets and we'll look at those in a second. But first just recognize we have the ability to change the properties of this material, right? So the base is the color. And currently my color is this gray color. Um, and now if I wanted this to look like, let's say copper or something like that, let's actually turn my, my sun around here so I have a little bit of a better view of it. Right. So let's say I wanted this to look a little bit more like um, chrome or you know, so, something like that to give us a, a more realistic glossiness to this. For that material, I could do something like turning up the metalness. So now it's starting to feel more like the property of metal. Right? Um, I could even try turning down the, the color here, make it like more of a darker gray. Right? Um, and then the specular is like the reflectivity of it or the, the highlights on this, right? Uh, just to make sure I'm gonna go ahead and hit three so we get that sort of smoothed right? so I can see what's what. Um, and so for that, maybe I, I don't want as much roughness. I want it to be a little bit more um, sharper highlights. So I'm able to sort of mix these things to get the effect that I'm looking for. Um, so up here under these presets, these presets are just uh, preset values on all of the different things that we have down here to make them feel like specific materials. So under presets, um, we could make it look like car paint or glass or gold. If I wanted a gold axe blade, I could replace that. And now I have this gold color. And again, like maybe all I want is that, but in gray, right? And so maybe that's a way that I could go in here and sort of change some of these things to, to turn it into the material that I want, right? Um, okay, so However, <laughs> there's no single color adjustment I could do to the axe handle to make it look like wood. Right? I, I could go in here and assign a new material to it, uh, Arnold AI standard surface, and I could make it a brown color, right? But there's no single color or single value I can change in here that's going to give us that wood grain. And so that's where we are going to go back to that web page we were looking at earlier, which is Polyhaven. And Polyhaven has three different things. It has HDRIs for image-based lighting, it has textures, and it has some models. So we're gonna ignore the models for right now, but let's go to the textures. And you'll see that there are a lot of different texture maps that we have in here. And what we want is wood. We want wood for some sort of axe handle. Uh, let's see what we have under clean. So this is more like hardwood. Uh, maybe if I go to uh, raw wood, what is that? There we go. So let's look at some of these. Maybe, maybe this wood table one. 
maybe that would make a good axe handle material. So when I click this, you're going to see that the, it gives us some images. This is what the material looks like on a sphere. Right? And then I click this. This is the actual color map. And then this is probably, I'm betting like the specular, uh, specular map. Uh, but you'll see all of these other maps that are here. Right? So we got AO, that stands for ambient occlusion. Right? Um, we have the diffuse map, which is the color. We have the normal map. And so the normal map, you'll see, kind of looks like a roughness to it, right? And what this is, is a map that tells us which way the light will bounce off of the material. Um, if we highlight over this, arm, and then displacement, and roughness. And so roughness is going to be like the specular roughness, how, um, how rough that material is. So all of those are different things that we need. Um, and so we have some options here of the type of file we might want to download. Let's do zip. And what that's going to give us is these images for all of our objects. And I don't really need the Blender or the GLTF file. In fact, I also don't, there's a lot of these I don't really need. Uh, really, all I'm wanting is my diffuse, maybe my normal, and my roughness. So I'll go ahead and uncheck my displacement. Uh, I'll go ahead and keep the AO rough metal. Uh, yeah, we'll do that just in case we want the metallic part. So I'm going to go ahead and download these. And again, I'm going to put this as axe textures. Save. And it's downloading a zip file. And we'll remember that a zip file is an archive. So don't just double click on this. We need to extract this. So right click, extract all, extract. And then I can delete the zip file. And so now we can see what's in this. And so these are the files that we need. And essentially, these are the files that we can map into different parts of our material to get a nice looking material out of this. So back in Maya, we can go ahead and start adding these materials to our axe handle. We're going to go all the way out here on our material. And under color, I'm going to choose a little checkerboard. And I want to choose File. And then I'm going to go to our folder. And under our Axe Textures, we could organize this better if we would like. I'm going to choose my Diffuse.jpg. And you're going to see that that brings the color of the Diffuse map in here. All right. It's a little dark. Uh, if we needed to make some adjustments to that, uh, down here under the file, we can do stuff like turn up our exposure to that, start making it just a little bit brighter. Of course, if we go too far, it's going to start looking kind of unrealistic, right? So I may just bump that up just a little bit, uh, just to get a little bit of a lighter color wood, right? Um, you know, we can play around with any of these that we, we want to, to, uh, to get just a little bit of a different look to that. Um, and I believe the only other thing I'm going to use, because I've tested this out before, I'm not really a, the, the roughness isn't a very good map on this. It's a, it's a good map, but it doesn't help our needs here. But if I wanted to map in the roughness, I would map it in here. If I wanted to download the metallicness map, I would map that in here. Uh, the biggest one I want to look at is I want to show you what happens with the normal map. And so that's down here under geometry, and we'll see bump mapping. So normal uh, and bump are basically ways of making it look like there's tiny detail etched into the model when there really isn't. And really what's happening there is Maya is using a texture to control the way light bounces off of a surface and make it look like there's more geometry there than there really is. So under bump mapping, I'm just going to go out here to my little checkerboard, choose file, and under bump, I'm going to change this to tangent space normals. Okay. And what that means is it's going to use the tangents of the, the mesh to bounce light off of it using the normal map. So once that's changed to tangent space normal, I click this little arrow out here on bump value. And now I can point to the file. Now when I downloaded these, I downloaded way more maps than I really needed. Um, 
And so there are multiple normal maps. There's normal DX and normal GL. And so this is depending on which render engine you're using. Uh, they, each of them calculate normals differently. And I'm pretty sure that Arnold uses DX. So we're just going to choose the DX EXR. And when I do that, what I want you to notice, you can't see it really well, but there's a little bit more, looks like scratches in that. And so we'll be able to see this better if I turn off the resolution of the render. If I go into my render settings and go down here and instead of 540, let's go ahead and do that to 1080. And you'll see, just a second, now you can see all of that extra little detail that is rendering in this. And again, I'll select that and hit three just to smooth that out a little bit. I can see it a little bit better. Um, so there's one more thing I want to talk about on this before we go too much further. I really like this, except for I wish that wood grain were going up and down and not across my model. And so that's going to get us, that's going to lead us into our UV maps. So if you'll remember, under UV, UV editor, you'll be able to see that the way this is lined up, if I turn on my textures uh, with this button right here, you'll be able to see that the axe handle is going up and down, but the texture is going from side to side. Now there's two ways that I could change this. One is I could right click on this and go to UV shell and select the entire UV shell here for my axe handle. And then I'm going to hold down J to snap this. And I could just rotate this 90 degrees, sort of move this back over into space here. And now that texture is going up and down, right? And so that's one of the things I really want you to start understanding with UVs is that our UVs are just a way for us to let Maya know that this is how I would like this 2D texture to wrap around this 3D object. Now I will say, if you, if you don't have the option to alter the UVs, there's another way we could do this. And that's by selecting this object and we go to our material. And for each of these maps that we, we mapped in here, right, um, with our color map here, our diffuse, you should see that we have a place 2D texture. And what I can do here is I can then rotate my UV 90 degrees. Now keep in mind, this is just going to do this for the diffuse map. And so you'll see I'm rotating the map and I can just type in 90 and get a vertical map there. And then I could also go back to my normal map right here and go to my place 2D texture and put in 90 there. And essentially what it did is it rotated the texture for each of those maps 90 degrees. And now I get this vertical map lining up this way. Um, last little thing I would point out, my axe is awfully clean looking. Uh, that's very, it's a very clean looking axe. And so I don't have to just use the metallic options that I have in here. I could, in fact, go back to my uh, Polyhaven and see if there's any metal options in here. Uh, let's see, we got metal. And maybe I would want to do some sort of rough or dirty corrugated metal. Like if I want a more of an, a rusty axe, right? So not as many metal options in here. Um, but if I wanted to do that with, let's say that uh, this really rusty metal, um, this will show you kind of what that's looking like. And I could do that and, and apply that to my uh, to my axe blade too and get much more of a rusty looking axe. Now Polyhaven isn't the only way we can get these materials. We're going to show you a little bit later um, how you can create these materials yourself. Uh, but the other thing is like maybe I don't want it to all be rusty. Maybe I want it to be partially rusty. I could also go into Photoshop and make some of these maps myself uh, just by mixing them together.